Peter Knights is the CEO of Wild Aid. He explained how China's ivory ban is the quote, the single greatest, greatest single step toward reducing elephant poaching. Well, the current poaching crisis really took off after 2008, 2009, when China opened up ivory trade. Almost immediately, there was a surge in the poaching, which went up to 33,000 elephants a year. Nothing really changed in Africa. It was all on the demand side that things changed. So now China's closing down that trade. We expect a resultant reduction in poaching. And indeed, the price of ivory has gone down to about a quarter of what it was at its peak, $500 a kilo down from 2,100. So that's going to impact poaching on the ground, in fact, already has in Africa. Well, as you mentioned, last year even there was a double-digit decline percentage-wise, both in prices and seizures in China. So what kind of impact could we continue to see? Well, as soon as the announcement was made it was going to be banned, that obviously impact the future price of ivory. If you can't resell it, then obviously the, the price is, is going to go down. So we've already seen a major reduction. Um, now I think people are waiting to see how strictly it will be implemented, and our early indications are that certainly customs in China take this very seriously. Um, we would expect to see further reductions in price uh, as it goes forward, um, because the, the illegal trade has always been a lot less lucrative than the legal trade. So we'd expect to see a reduction in poaching even further uh, over the next few years and uh, hopefully you know the elephants uh, are out of trouble for now. China has been one of the biggest markets in the world for ivory. What example does this ban set and can other countries follow China's lead? Well, absolutely. China was estimated to be about 70 percent of the demand for illegal ivory historically. Um, so that's really a big chunk out the market. But uh, ideally, we closed down the market for ivory completely. And now there's really only Japan left as a major market. Other countries around the world, other places, like places like Taiwan, Hong Kong, are all moving to, to stop their ivory trade. And it's really only Japan is the, the only market. And we hope that China's example will be taken up by Japan and the whole world can come together to protect the elephants from this threat. You mentioned enforcement a moment ago. What more needs to be done in terms of enforcement and awareness of this span in China? Well, I think uh, one concern is that uh, the trade shifts geographically. So there's places like Laos and Vietnam that have weaker enforcement. So we're, we're trying to work with the governments there to up their game. And then there's also the Internet. So, you know, people will not be able to sell in retail stores anymore, but there'll still be stuff going on on the Internet. So that takes a different kind of policing to make sure this trade doesn't just go on, go on the Internet. It needs a more intelligence based. It needs a more consistent following up. If uh, ivory is advertised, police need to find out if it's legal or not etc and things like that so enforcement needs to change a little bit but things have been getting a lot better all over Southeast Asia in Vietnam they've been making lots of seizures uh, police and, and customs are now kind of onto this for a long time they were just letting it go and now they're really on the case all right Peter Knights thank you for your time we appreciate it